I stand before you today as an 18-year-old climate activist, as somebody who's been fighting for environmental protection for most of my life and is trying to find a way to continue doing so. In 2018, when I was 14 years old, I first read about the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report that came out that year. It said three main things. We need to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Two degrees Celsius or more of warming would be catastrophic. And we had 12 years, which has now been greatly reduced, to prevent the worst consequences of the climate crisis. While I had always known that climate change was a thing, that it was concerning, I hadn't realized just how pressing it was until that moment. It shocked me, it scared me, and it also propelled me to act. Over the last four years, I've learned a lot about climate action, environmental justice, policy change, and so much more. And while a lot of that growth has been positive, and I'm grateful for it, some of it wasn't so positive. I was so saturated by the urgency of climate change, by being frightened about what I meant my future, or my sister's future, or my generation's future by my anger towards those who have and had the ability to do something about this crisis and chose not to. That when I learned that in our current system, even common sense climate action from politicians who claim to care about climate change takes many years, or that even within the climate movement, there would be those who would doubt me and say that what I was pushing for was too much or too fast, that I quickly became disillusioned. I lost a lot of hope and belief. And the political system, yes, but perhaps more importantly, and our ability to change and fight for something better. Those feelings, in conjunction with COVID-19, drove me towards burnout and despair, and to question if I even wanted to continue doing this work as I graduate college and begin my career. Perhaps this sounds familiar in some way. Perhaps when you learned about climate change, you painted a similarly dire picture. But perhaps, like me, you also still love this work in some way. Or maybe you simply care really deeply about what we're fighting for. Either way, this experience drove me, and hopefully you as well, to consider what we can do to make our movement more sustainable. And while there are, of course, a lot of factors that can drive someone towards burnout, what I want to focus on today is the reason that we fight, and how that can be either a source of strength or one of potential weakness. But first, I want to frame this discussion with an understanding that the climate crisis is a truly dire situation. Across the world, people are already feeling the effects of the climate crisis, although very unequally. Some communities are being devastated by hurricanes, wildfires, sea level rise, and more. Others continue to be exploited for profit. Some struggle with asthma and cancer caused by, to caused by toxic waste facilities while still others struggle every day with the mental health effects that come with the climate crisis. And just this month, the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change released another report, this one saying that we have until just 2025 to prevent the worst consequences of the climate crisis and keep global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. And I also want to be clear that we, meaning regular people, especially those of us with less economic resources or who have more barriers, to participating fully in this country as a citizen and a resident, we are not to blame for this crisis. And while we are not to blame, we are the ones who will bear a disproportionate burden of the worst effects. This is especially true in communities that are majority Black, Indigenous, Latinx, or other people of color. It is also true that low-income communities will bear a disproportionate burden, as will young people and future generations. But what if instead of acting and so what I want to, you know, kind of focus on with all of this is instead of acting out of fear, instead of acting out of anger, which are those, you know, things that drove me for a really long time, what if we acted out of something different? What if we acted out of something that made our movement more sustainable? Oftentimes, climate change is communicated through a lens of fear, as these headlines clearly show. However, a study published in 2009 found that while fear around climate change might motivate some to do this work initially, it generally doesn't continue over the long term, therefore necessitating other means of motivation to sustain someone's involvement with this work. And beyond that, when we're constantly afraid, we're forced into survival mode, unable to function at our highest capacity. When we're always angry, it's hard to consider other perspectives and how best to bring people together. And fear, anger, they're so powerful that they threaten to burn us out or leave us depleted and unable to continue fighting for the things that we care about. Furthermore, when we're fighting out of fear and anger, we're generally fighting against something. 
There's an initiative, an action, a person that threatens us in some way. And so we're responding to that attack, trying to defend ourselves. But what if instead of acting like this, instead of acting out of fear, instead of acting out of anger, what if we acted out of hope? What if we acted out of something that made our movement more sustainable instead of less sustainable? I believe that the first step in acting out of hope is fighting for and not just against something. I'm fighting for a world in which no matter who you are or where you live or what your race or gender or nationality is, you are safe because we've replaced fossil fuels with renewable energy. And so asthma and other respiratory disease rates have sharply declined. A world in which economic inequality and poverty are also lower because there are thousands of new union jobs in all different sectors, from construction of renewable energy to local agriculture and community engagement. A world in which young people like me don't have to be activists because they know that elected officials work only for the people, both the people on the planet now and those who will come in the future. A world with easy access to services like public transportation, local food, housing, all of these different things. I could keep going, keep imagining the kind of world that we can build, but I want to turn this around for a moment. I want to ask you, what are you fighting for? Take a moment to consider it the kind of world that we can create. And now I want you to use that image to reimagine the climate movement. Not as a bunch of angry people yelling about how messed up the world is, although I've certainly been there and done that, and honestly, I think it has a time and a place, but rather as a community of people from all different walks of life, from all around the world, who all believe so strongly in creating a world that is more just, more kind, more safe, more secure, that they are willing to stand up and fight for it every single day. That movement is not only able to be more successful in understanding what exactly it is fighting for, but it is also more sustainable. And it's not just me saying this. A study published in 2013 found that catastrophic and alarmist visual imagery around climate change actually decreased public engagement with this issue. And beyond that, it also found that hope was one of the strongest positive predictors of support for national climate policy. But beyond hope helping us act, making our movement more sustainable, no small contributions, it also helps ground us in community. Because when we're fighting for something, we have to be in constant conversation and collaboration with others. For example, a lot of the work that I do centers around bringing new young people into the climate movement. That requires me to not only consider how I'm communicating with young people, i.e not communicating climate change as an issue that is unsolvable, which is scientifically untrue anyway, but also to consider what I'm hearing from the young people who are already doing this work. What support they're receiving and what they're not. What issues matter to them most within climate change? What motivates them to do this work? What makes them feel most powerful? And what they need to be even more powerful. By having these conversations, by being in collaboration with those young people, we are all able to move forward and more effectively bring new youth into this work. And so by being grounded in hope, by focusing on fighting for and not just against something, our movement is more, more sustainable and more successful. We are able to more effectively fight for both the planet and people. And I know that having hope in this moment can be hard. It means continuing to believe in something that sometimes seems out of our reach. It means being vulnerable, opening ourselves up to the possibility of disappointment. But I also believe that it is absolutely essential for building the world that we want. And so as you leave here today, I'm asking you to take hopeful action in whatever way you can. From something as simple as having a conversation with a family member or friend that helps inspire them to act through hope rather than fear, to advocating for climate change, education, and the United States and around the world that empowers young people to act through understanding both the problem but also the solution, to changing your mindset, especially for fellow activists, to one that is rooted in hope and communicates that same hope to others so as not to burn ourselves and the movement out. I stand before you today as an 18-year-old climate activist as someone who has been fighting for the environment for most of my life and will continue to do so because I can imagine a world that is more safe, more kind, and more just. I'm taking the risk of fighting for that world through hope and belief. I'm doing it for and with the communities and people that I love and care about. And now I'm asking you to join me.
Thank you.